Welcome back to day two of our road trip review. Our first stop today will be unit three, interpreting words and phrases in context, where we'll visit sites such as analyzing word choice and interpreting words and phrases in context. After that, we're off to the sunny unit four, also known as understanding core ideas and principles, where we will revisit analyzing point of view and author's purpose, determining central ideas and themes, and summarizing. Man, this is gonna be great. My brain cells are pumped. Oh, and I hope you remembered to pack your close reading skills again. You know, you're analyzing, interpreting, rereading, digging deeper, evaluating and synthesizing ideas. We're gonna need those today too. Grab your snacks and buckle up and let's hit the road. Our first stop today will be at Unit 3, Interpreting Words and Phrases in Context, where we find two component skills, Analyzing Word Choice and the redundantly named Interpreting Words and Phrases in Context. Let's take the left fork first. Here, we're reminded that word choice refers to an author's intentional, precise use of specific words in order to convey a tone, an idea, or an implied understanding. It's the most basic form of rhetoric, which, as you'll recall, refers to the ways in which authors and speakers choose to use language in order to produce a desired effect. Oh man, remember Jane Austen? She was like the master of word choice. She opened her novel Pride and Prejudice with a sarcastic tone right off the bat when she said, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. A truth universally acknowledged. You see, she's mocking the people who think that. Classic. Or what about when President John F. Kennedy said, we dare not forget today that we are heirs of that first revolution. Why would he use the word heirs here? Yeah, that makes sense. He's telling his audience that they inherited their freedom, their liberty from people who fought in the Revolutionary War. And then he says the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. Huh. Interesting choice of words. Have you figured what I'm thinking? The torch of freedom has been passed to these heirs, this new generation of Americans, and they better keep it going. He was really laying it on thick with that word choice. That's a lot of responsibility. Okay, let's go back and take that right fork now. While we're visiting Unit 3, we do not want to miss interpreting words and phrases in context. You'll remember that context is the text surrounding a word or phrase. It's super important to look to the context when we're trying to comprehend words and phrases. Like take the word heart, for instance. Its meaning could be a lot of different things depending on the context it's in. Like you could say that someone has a big heart or that we need to get to the heart of the matter, or that this is the heart of the city, or that someone's got a real kind heart. The meaning changes depending on the context. So let's get to the heart of this context issue with President Theodore Roosevelt, who once said, each man's individual temper and convictions must be taken into account. What do you think he meant by the word temper? In this case, I think it's safe to say he wasn't referring to how hard a piece of steel is. He's talking about a person's disposition, right? And then convictions. Whoa, why does he use that word? Is he talking about someone being convicted of a crime? Oh, wait, I get it. Convictions can also mean a person's strongly held beliefs. That, that makes much more sense. Or what about when President Carter said we are at a turning point in our history? What does that phrase even mean? A turning point? Oh, yeah, a turning point means it's time to make a big decision that might bring about a big change. And hey, I think we're at a turning point in our road trip because if we don't hurry, we might not make it to unit four. 
And that brings us to unit four, understanding core ideas and principles. We got three stops on this tour, analyzing point of view and author's purpose, determining central ideas and themes, and summarizing. And I hear that there's gonna be a gift shop at the end of the tour. I don't know about you, but uh, yeah, I, I need some breath mints. Point of view is often referred to as the who and author's purpose as the why. Like when I had two donuts and my little brother said some uncharacteristically nice things and then I realized who was talking and suddenly the why became very clear. Yeah, not gonna happen, kid. I'm on his point of view and purpose and I'm not sharing. Or what about what President Carter said, we can spend until we empty our treasuries and we may summon all the wonders of science, but we can succeed only if we tap our greatest resources, America's people, America's values, and America's confidence. Okay, point of view. He was president during a serious energy crisis and people were not happy. But why does he say that we can succeed only if we tap our greatest resources? America's people, America's values, and America's confidence. Oh yeah, I see what he's doing here. Very clever of Carter. While natural resources like fossil fuels were challenging Americans, he decided to shift the focus to our greatest resources, like people, values, and confidence. We also learned about central idea and theme in this unit. Remember, a central idea is the main idea of a text or the main point that an author is trying to make. And a theme is the bigger idea that extends beyond the passage and can be applied to other situations. Like take for instance, say you read an article that told you about how the health of humans and animals are intertwined and should be studied together. The central idea of the article would be that the health of humans and animals are intertwined and should be studied together. It's pretty straightforward. But a theme is bigger than that. And a theme can be applied to other scenarios. Let's read these words from Jack London's To Build a Fire. The brief day drew to a close in a long, slow twilight. There were no signs of a fire to be made, and besides, never in the dog's experience had it known a man to sit like that in the snow and make no fire. As the twilight drew on, its eager yearning for the fire mastered it, and with a great lifting and shifting of forefeet, it whined softly, then flattened its ears down in anticipation of being chidden by the man. But the man remained silent. Mm, so sad. You can figure out from phrases like, there were no signs of a fire to be made, and the man remained silent. The guy died. No spoiler here. We've discussed this in our lessons. So this poor guy ignores everyone's advice and tries to make it on his own, well, except his canine companion, in the harsh conditions of the Yukon Territory. And he doesn't make it. That's the central idea. But the theme is bigger than that. It has to do with ideas of nature and survival. Uh, it transcends the plot and characters of the story. The theme can be applied to real world situations. Uh, if I had to put it into words, I would say in a competition between man and nature, nature triumphs. That's the theme. That could be applied to the real world. Like say, me versus Poison Ivy, uh, two minutes ago, while you were reading that passage. Yeah, nature won that one. Um, oh, here we are, last stop, summarizing. A summary is a brief overview of a text's most important idea or ideas. It conveys the main points of a passage without adding extraneous details or personal interpretations. Summarizing, then, means creating a brief overview of the text. Remember our very basic example? While the bears are out for a walk, Goldilocks sneaks into their house. Goldilocks samples their food and belongings. The bears come home and scare her away. Straightforward, no frills, straight to the point, summary. Okay, okay, I, I, I don't know about you, but I am ready to get off the road for a bit. Uh, why don't you 
take a look at the PDF and go over the key ideas from unit three and four, and then uh, go to the online question sets and practice your skills. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna go check out that gift shop, see if they have some itch cream. Well, I guess it would be anti-itch cream. That, cure for poison ivy, <laughs> that, would, that, would, that would just be great. Where's my sunglasses? I had them in unit three, I had them in unit four, then I checked out the patch of 